Greetings, everyone. My name is Robert Messina, and I am attempting right now to uh, point out all of the main verses in every chapter of Daniel. Some chapters, like 7 and 8, have a lot more than their other chapters. But every single chapter will, in some way, uh, refer to things that are in Revelation and things that are end time events. So that is the um, challenge and I'm going to take on that challenge tonight and I, I try to make it as brief as I can. Okay, so let's get into it. If I'm making it brief, let's start going. Alright, let's uh, go to the first chapter of Daniel. Daniel 1 verse 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So uh, now the, the, the background is Babylon had just taken Jerusalem captive in they took the Jews and they brought them into Babylon, and Daniel is now captive in Babylon. The temple was plundered. They brought the vessels into the into Babylon, and Daniel is a eunuch. You see, he's prince of the eunuchs, uh, and he um, was was told that he had that he was going to be fed well with the king's meat and with the king's wine. But this is something that he absolutely did not want any part of. And so he, he requested that. And uh, um, why wouldn't he want the king's meat? Now, I see that as perhaps the, the blood was not poured out. Perhaps the, the animal was strangled. Perhaps it was an unclean animal, and perhaps it was uh, a meat that was sacrificed to idols. Now that points directly to Revelation 20, to Revelation 2:20, talking to one of the seven churches. Notwithstanding, I have a few thing, a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So that is something that is prevent was prevalent then, was prevalent in the days of Ahab. Ahab uh, married Jezebel, who was a model of Babylon, a daughter of Babylon, you could say, mystery woman Babylon, okay, and um, so she's uh, trying to seduce the, the servants of our Lord to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols, all right? So um, right there, there's that connection with the meat. So that would, would answer your question, why doesn't he want, want to eat the king's meat? And, and, and nor the wine which he drank. Now the wine, I mean, um, there's no problem that wine is not unlawful to drink. We're commanded to drink wine at the Passover uh, Seder. Um, and how does the wine defile? Well, the wine could be mingled and mingled with something that is not right. And Revelation 17, 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearl, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So that's what's mingled in with her wine. Abominations, filthiness of fornication, and later on in 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So, 
now the martyrs of Jesus weren't around then, but there were saints that were prophets that were killed, and um, uh, she is she is uh, she is responsible for all the, the blood of all that was slain. We we'll read later. Revelation 18:3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So that includes Babylon, and especially includes Babylon, because she is mystery woman Babylon. The the country, the nation that destroyed the temple, stopped the sacrifices, um, took the people captive. All right, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, especially King Nebuchadnezzar, because he's king of Babylon. And he's one of the main kings of the earth. And this is the main seductive spirit, mystery woman Babylon, getting people to sin and worship idols and fornicate and kill and hate the people of God. This is what she does. All right, so let's uh, go to the next chapter. Uh, chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2 has a, um image of a man that has a gold, the head of gold, uh, silver shoulders and arms, uh, a, a, bra a brass torso, uh, iron legs, and feet that is iron mixed with clay. Alright? So these represent, um, five kingdoms beginning the golden head begins with Babylon now you have to read other parts in in that chapter to get this uh, but the golden head represents Babylon the silver arms and, and shoulders represent Mede Persia the brass represents the uh, Grecian Empire the iron legs represent uh, Rome and the iron and clay feet will represent the end time empire. You, we could see it from a distance. It's, it's, it's coming up the horizon and we can, we can start to see and make out what it looks like. So it's close, very, very close. This seven empire that is represented in this image of the, uh, iron and clay. All right. Now, in verse 35 is the end of the empire, so it's the end times. It's even after the end of the last empire. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became... Now, this is broken to pieces together after a stone hit the image at the feet of the image. And so it is at the last days. Okay? And I, I, I see that stone as truth. The truth of God. Because these, these empires don't carry the truth of God. They don't have the laws of God. They don't have the wills of God. Except for when God wants to, them to do something for Him, then they have the will of God. Other than that, they don't. Okay? This image was broken to pieces and became like chaff of the summer threshing floors. Now, the, dividing the chaff from the wheat, you go on the threshing floor, you throw the, the wheat up into the, 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 the wheat and the chaff up into the wind, and the wind carries the light seeds where they have to go, and the chaff hits the ground. And then once the chaff, once it's all done, then the wind comes along and blows away the chaff. And uh, that's what it says. And the wind carried them away, and no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. That's the mountain of the Lord. That's the um, and a mountain also represents kingdom, the kingdom of God. So this great, the stone that smote the other kingdoms became a great kingdom itself and filled the whole earth. Okay? Uh, now that directly points to Revelation 11.5 where the seventh angel 
So there, in Revelation, there are seven seals, and the seventh seal opens up seven trumpets, and this is the seventh trumpet that's being sounded in 11.5, and it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. So you see that directly relates to uh, Daniel 2.35. Okay, Daniel 3. This was this chapter was about a golden image. Now the image was six cubits wide and sixty cubits tall. So it was about nine feet wide and ninety feet tall. Golden image. And um, so you see the number six there, six feet wide, sixty six tens tall. We're going to get to in Revelation what rep, what this image and this procedure is replicated and talked about. But this actually happened already in Daniel, and it's going to happen again. The way Revelation describes it, and we have not seen it yet. Okay, Daniel 3, 4 through 6. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, so just about everybody, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you will fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falls not down and worships shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning furnace. Now, so that relates to Revelation 13:15. And now we're talking about the second beast now that comes up from the land. Um, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, which is the first beast that came out of the sea, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. See? So if you didn't worship the statue, you went to the fiery furnace and you were killed. If you don't worship the image of the beast, you should be killed. All right? Direct correlation. Daniel 4, 30 and 31. Then it's chapter 4 now. Now this is a, a, a chapter that talks about um, the sin of the king of Babylon. And that's a sin of pride. And how God is sympathetic and wants to let him understand. And so um, he does what he does. And the king's this is the, the sin right now. The king spake. By the way, by the way, he had a vision that troubled him. He asked Daniel what the vision was, and Daniel let him know that it was a vision that he was going to have his kingdom taken away, and he was going to change, and he was going to have seven times, or it came out to be seven years. He's, he's like an animal eating grass, okay? Anyway, so he has that vision, and then part of the vision says that his kingdom will be returned. So Daniel tells him all of that, and Daniel says to him, in Daniel 4.27, he says, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. So he's counseling, he's trying to give him some advice. Break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. So Daniel wants him to sort of like um, repent of his sins and his iniquities and do the right thing and show mercy to the poor. If he did that, he says, it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Daniel 4, 30 and 31, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built? Now this is a year after the vision. Is not this Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might, by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? So this is 
the sin of pride. There's, there's lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So he has the pride of life. That's the worst case of pride you can have. He's the king of, of, of well, basically of all the earth, almost. And it's because of his power and his majesty. Now, now he's not recognizing God. All right? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. So the, the, the vision came true. That type of pride is, is in Revelation with, with uh, the beast and the blasphemous false prophet and also blasphemous uh, mystery woman Babylon. And I'm just going to bring out um, mystery woman Babylon's uh, pride of life sin that she has. Uh, how much she has glorified, Revelation 18, 7 and 8. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. But she says in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. So she's seeing herself as majestic woman, not in a widow status where she's poor and not in a uh, a sor and no sorrow is she going to see. So she's it. And therefore her plague shall come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judges her. Now let's go over to five. And five is almost a continuation, five is almost a continuation of this sin of pride that, um, Nebuchadnezzar had. And he has a great party, and he and he praises he praises the gods for silver and gold and stuff. Okay, let's read it. Daniel five twenty two and twenty three. Now this is Daniel reprimanding him. And thou, his son, Nebuchadnezzar's son, is actually his grandson. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart, though thou knowest all this. Thou knewest all, that you knew all these things about what happened to your grandfather, what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He lifted up and tried and then he changed. And after he changed, he had a, a correct praise of God, the true living God. Okay. But thou hast lifted, lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Now that relates to Revelation 9.20, where a lot of chastisement is going on with the people. And, and the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of, their, of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. It's almost the same thing. Same thing. The praising the gods of silver, gold, brass, iron, wood, and stone. The only one that's not in this other list is iron, uh, and which neither can see nor hear, and that's the same up there. And the, up in Daniel, he says, nor know, know anything. Uh, an idol doesn't know anything, and Revelation talks about it as and it doesn't walk. So if you can't walk around, you don't know what's going on. Unless somebody walks around and tells you. But when you're a stone or a piece of wood, you don't know anything. And you can't walk. Uh, let's go over to the sixth chapter. Daniel goes into the lion's den. Now, the, the background of this is that um, some princes of the Medes were um, envious of Daniel and they wanted his position of power and authority. 
and they would think they connive, they connive the way to do it. So they could only get him on what he does every day, and that's pray to God. And they were going to try to get him on praying to God and, and, and the love of God that it has. So they had a decree made, and, and the king, Darius, um, signed it. And now 610. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his win and his window being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did a four time. So three times a day, he would go up into he go into his house, go to his chamber that has the window pointing towards Jerusalem open the window, kneel down in the sight of men, and pray to God. All right? And he did it every single day. And so they wanted to see if he was going to do it after it was written by law that if you do that, you are going to be sent to the lion's den. Now, people say, well, why didn't he just pray in secret? Just walk around the city uh, and pray, you know, silently, or um, go into a faraway place where nobody could see him and pray silently. Why didn't he do something like that? Because, and the reason is, is because every single day he's been doing it this way. So why does he change? And so if he changed that routine, that, he, that righteous routine that he does, it's telling them, I'm a... I serve a living God, but I'm afraid to get killed, thrown into life then. And so he had a better testimony than that. He did not deny his father. So that points to one of the uh, speakings to one of the seven churches, Revelation 3, 8 through 10. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast had, thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. So they're not a strong bunch of people that still have little strength, but nevertheless, they have kept his word, and have not denied his name. And because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. There's going to be an hour of temptation uh, that's going to come upon all the world, uh, as spoken of in Revelation. And uh, to me, it looks this. To me, there's two. Um, they might be the one and the same. There's going to be where everybody has to take a mark, or they can't buy or sell. And then the other one is they have to worship the image of the beast, otherwise they're going to be killed. So both of those are going to be global and I I look at those those both of them as the hour of temptation and you can be kept from it as it says right there uh, it's part of your daily prayer um, lead us not into temptation keep us from temptation so, so so you may get out of it and the, by not denying his name on the, on little things, Maybe you won't have to deny him on the big one. I don't know, but the main thing is not to deny his name. Okay, let's go over to uh, Daniel seven seventeen, and uh, these great beasts, which are four, the lion, the, the bear, the leopard, and the ten horned beasts, are four kings, uh, which shall arise out of the earth, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever and forever and ever. So that's the summation of the kingdoms. Again, it's like the image of the statue that had the different metals. Now it's uh, those same empires are represented as um, different kinds of, of beasts or animals. And um, the, the beast that's represented in Revelation chapter 13. Let's, let's go there. 
uh, verse 1 and 2, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. So he's like this beast that has the ten horns. This one has ten horns. And upon his, his horns, ten crowns. And upon his heads, the names of blasphemy. And the, and the beast which I saw was like a, unto a leopard. Uh, and his feet were the feet of a bear. And his mouth was the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. So you see the the four the same four beasts that are represented in Daniel for the different empires are now the beast of Revelation has those characteristics of those empires within within their genes you might say because red dragon has seven heads and ten horns himself. So this beast is his it is in his image. Now the dragon is red. He's also uh, called the scarlet colored beast. And red and scarlet are very similar. I think that that's relating to the same beast there. This is a different beast because it's not red. It's got the body of a leopard. It's got the feet of a bear. It's got the mouth of a lion. 